and welcome back from Gamers of the World. Today we are going to be playing the Northern Provinces as Grand Cathay to kind of do a beginner's guide among what you should do every turn for people who are just starting Total Warhammer and for those who are just looking to get into Grand Cathay for kind of like a tips and tricks and a helpful video to help you along your way on holding the Great Bastion against the Daemon Hordes. So, hope you guys will enjoy. If you like the video, definitely hit the subscribe button. But let's get on to it. How Cathay plays. Harmony. All aspects of development Cathay are aligned with Yin or Yang. <clears throat> Bonuses are earned and penalties are suffered based on the balance between the two. Wu Zing Compass. The Wu Zing Compass influences the flow of the winds of magics around the Cathayan homelands. The ruler of the Celestial Empire may use its power to bolster their defenses, enrich their lands, and divert harmful magic away to the desert. The Ivory Road. Cathayan factions can send trade caravans to the west along the perilous Ivory Road. Choices will have to be made and challenges overcome if expeditions are to be successful. So we're going to go over Harmony first. Then we'll go over the Wuzing Compass, and then we will go over the Ivory Road. <clears throat> so, the first quest you get is to defeat an army belonging to the following faction in battle, the Rebel Lord of Nan Yang. So basically what the game wants you to do is take this person and attack this rebel here. What I like to do first is I like to do my battles at the end of my turn. Reason being is so that I don't miss anything that is crucial to uh, developing our economy early game. So as you can see, as we mentioned before with the how they play the harmony aspect, right here, this is the harmony. So when you have too much yin, this is the effects that you get. And if you have too much yang, you get the opposite effects. So for example, if you have too much yang, you get minus income from yang villains 5%. Then you start getting minus 6 control and minus 15% for Yang building. So these are the negatives. And then you start getting minus 40% and minus 10 control for the Yang. But you still get the benefit of the Yin buildings if you have too much Yang. But on the other side, you have, if you have too much Yin, you start suffering about pretty much the same penalties as the other side. So what you want to achieve is perfect balance. So on turn one, what you want to do is go to Nan, Nan Gao, and you want to go here, and you can see all these tabs for Landmark, Resources, Basic Military, Advanced Military, Defense, and Infrastructure. And as you can see, all their buildings have something associated with Yin yin and Yang on them. What I like to do first turn is I like to look and see that we have... A lot of harmony in the yin category one way to counteract that would be to recruit a lord so you could either recruit a, a lord magistrate with um, enlightened crafty or a fervent questionnaire but what we're looking for right now is we're looking for yang to balance out the yin so what I like to do is go to the dragon blooded shoot gun and I would go to here tactician or bureaucrat so right now, we don't need control in our local province. Uh, we do need leadership and character or our leadership effect. So now, as you can see, we have harmony. So now what I like to do next is I like to use what we call recruit units, global recruitment. And I just like to do a peasant long spearman and a peasant archer. The reason why we're doing this now is to take this, the snake gate later. So this is preparing you to take this before their forces can go inside the snake gate so that this army can continue to take your first province, which will severely boost your economy in the early game. So now what we're going to do is go to Nangu, and we're going to look at everything that we could make here. So as you can see right here, you get yin harmony plus one yin. For example, when you attack this, you're going to get an Astromancer. The Astromancer, I believe, is a Yin building, so let's look real quick. Astromancer... I believe they give you Yin as 
well instead of yang. So what we want to do is build a white building here to balance it out. So we're going to build the labor. Actually, is it? We're going to build the tea parlor building. And now we're going to go to our technology tree. And because we're building a black building here, we're going to go for the Harmeric Yang because growth is very important in your early stage of your game. We must remain so now what we're going to do, as you can see that we have, if we've recruited our two units, that's going to take two turns. We have gotten our balance and harmony here, and we have Nan Gao creating the tea parlor, which will give us growth and income from settlements. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be having to go after Shen Lev, the rebel army here. So this is where we're going to actually play the battle, even though it is winnable, to show you how the units are played within Cathay. So as you can see, you can scout the terrain here, and you can also save be between each battles to kind of get a quick save in case you did something that you did not like in your previous battle, and you can replay it. So we're going to click Fight Battle. To... And welcome back, everyone. So we are now in the battlefield with the yin and yang units of the Storm Dragons. So you can risk magic for more favorable wins, or we can leave it how it is and kind of just leave where it is. And it looks like we are going to be fine with where we're at. So we're just going to hit Start Deployment. And now we're going to look at our units. So if you press K, you can turn cinematic mode on. You can look that we have some horses. We have the Celestial Guard, the Jade Warriors. We have some Peasant Spears. We have the Storm Dragon herself. We have Celestial Crossbowmen. We have Peasant Archers, and we have a Sky Junk. So... What you have to keep in mind on the battlefield here, so for example, if I click on this, there is this bonus that you get if you get yin and yang. So if you have the white units, yang, and the black units, yin, come close together, it creates harmony, which boosts defense and leadership for all Cathayan units, which is very strong, and you're going to have to play to these strengths in multiplayer and on campaign. So, for example, if we were to move this archer right there, now you can see that when we drag it back, they lost harmony. So, you can see that when I put it back forward, they gain the harmony when they get the circle complete, and you can see the yin and the yang together. When I drag it back, it's not there anymore. So, what you can do as well for this is your horse we can put them in the back because we're not going to be using them for this first battle we're going to be putting the sky junk right behind them to do most of the work here so the sky junk is going to be doing most of the work for our rest of our units because the sky junk is in fact it is artillery that flies so it's always flying it cannot land it has bombardments it has Eye of the Dragon, so it has four spotting. It has Wounds, and it has the Harmonic Effect. So now you can see with Artillery, Harmony. With Harmony, it increased the Reload Skill, plus 24, and Leadership, plus 12. For melee units, it is Wind and fire. Leadership and Defense. Mind and for Archers, fire. it is Reload Skill and Leadership. So as you can see, a trend here. For archers, it's reload, and for um, melee units, it is defense. For the cavalry, it is leadership and defense. So you can see a trend there. So the reason why also being in perfect harmony is absolutely amazing within Cathay and trying to start, strive for harmony is you get this ability called Ancestral Warriors, which is basically these warriors, Celestial Dragon Guard unit, that that have a time frame of being summoned and they're basically expendable units on the battlefield 
that can pretty much only be damaged by magic, so they can do some good damage on the enemy. So now what we're going to do is show you stats of each, each unit. So you can see they have armor piercing, anti-large, and charge defense against all. As you can see, Jade Warriors just have Armored Shielding and Harmony Yang. Armored Shielding. The Long Spears are anti-large, charge defense against all, and they're expendable. You have the Dragon Crossbowmen who have Armor Piercing Missiles. You have the Peasant Archers who are weak against armor and expendable. You have the, uh, the Peasant Horsemen very fast, Vanguard deployment and expendable. And you have the always flying trait. So it cannot land, so once it runs out of ammo, it is done. Okay. So now we have her skills here, which you transform into a dragon. We have Earth Blood and we have Storm of Shadows. Which Storm of Shadows is very, very helpful for uh, campaign battles. Because you can slow down units and then bog them down with either magic or with archers and then the heal is very important because it does a circle area of heals. So let us jump into the battlefield here and show you what we would do in this situation. So what I like to do is I like to select everything. So if you click on Mao Ying the Storm Dragon, you can select group or just press G and bring them into a group. I like to usually group up my units so that's easier to select them in the battlefield so that you know what is happening on your battlefield. You don't have to do your grouping the same way I do, but you can do it however you would like to do yourself. So what I like to do is I like to drag my units out so I get a really good front line and it makes it to where if they have artillery, they won't be able to do as much damage if it's in a big square like so. Now we're going to stretch these guys out over here as well. And if you hold right, if you hold the right mouse button, that is how you stretch the units. Hold right mouse and stretch. Now for the archers, since we want to maintain perfect balance, we're going to put the archers and stretch them behind each sides of all of this, of all the melee. We're going to bring Mao Mao Yang back in the Mao Ying back in the middle here. We're going to bring the cavalry up just in case we need it. And we're going to put the sky junk in the back still. So as you can see, this is a pretty decent formation for a campaign. But for multiplayer, this would not be the ideal. So what we want to do, even in campaign, sometimes it is nice to just drag your units back a little bit just in case they have a spell. So your units don't take as much damage. As you can see, now it's not all in a straight line, so the spells won't hit us as hard. And there we go. So now what we can do is hit start battle. And what I like to do with the Sky Junk is have them shoot at their archers here to ruin their harmony. So if you're fighting Cathayan units, what you want to do, if they have more archers on the battlefield, you want to probably try to wipe out the melee units first. And if they have more ra or less range on the battlefield, you want to wipe out the range first because then they would lose their harmony buff and they'll weaken their defenses by a lot. So what we can do here is we can wait for them to get into the archer's range and then use her ability to use Storm of Shadows to slow down the enemy forces so they can no longer um, move away from arrows hitting them so we have more time to shoot more arrows. So we're going to hold off and wait until they get within the purple line here, which yours will probably be a different color. So we shall wait. And there we are. So now the Celestial Dragon Crossmen should be starting to shoot. And as you can see, they are. We're going to slow them down. And now that Astral Warrior ability comes in handy. Because we can use this Astral Warrior to go on to the, the archers back here. So we can bog them down. And what this does is summon a unit of very powerful warriors through a Dragon Gate. And we're going to have them attack the archers just to get them off the battlefield. That's all we're using them for. So now we're going to have the Sky Junk also shoot the archers in the back. You know, try to just get rid of that harmony. Just keep them running as much as we can. And we're going to have both crossbowmen shoot. Did 
to try to get rid of the Lord. So we're going to switch off the archers and switch to the peasant long spearmen. And we're just going to set up our formation again to be able to shoot. So now our archers will start doing volleys into the Lord over here to start doing a lot of damage. As you can see, this gray bar right here, or white bar, is their leadership bar. When that goes down to the bottom, that means they are going to run away off the battlefield. As you can see over here, this one is low. This one is coming back up. So we're going to switch to attack the uh, peasant monk spearmen to try to break their leadership so that they run. As you can see, this lord here is also breaking in leadership. So though, when they have the skull next to name, that means they're not going to be coming back on the battlefield. So we can switch to another target. As you can see, the Celestial Dragon Guard are a lot stronger than the Peasant Spearmen, especially since we also have the leadership buff here. What we're going to do is throw a heal off on our units here. And we're going to slow down the Lord here. So he can't run away. And there we go. We have won the battle. So what we're going to do is just end the battle for the sake of time. So as you can see, we lost zero units. We got 94 kills from the Sky Junk, 40 kills from the Celestial Dragon Crossman, and 19 kills from the Peasant Archers. As well as the Celestial Guards have got 7 kills from when the Peasants charged into them. So, since we lost no units, there's no point in taking Venerated. Our leadership, the thing with Cathay is if you have always having harmony, this buff here is not applicable very much if you have full health and you have full leadership if you keep your harmony. So on the first turn, I always take that extra money because we're not going to be taking any casualties anyway. So now the game is going to give you... A potent ally has joined your more rebels infest the mines ahead. Bolster your legion. With so I misspoke before. The Astromancer is in fact Yin, so we need to make the Yang building to then have harmony next turn, and I apologize for that. So we need to bring the Astromancer into her army. And we're going to recruit two Iron Hail Gunners. Cavern Dispatch available. So this is what we were talking about, the Cavern Dispatch. So you can click on your cavern. You can recruit a new caravan. I always like to increase it as much as money as possible, so then you get the best return as possible. So you have to look at your return of investment. So if we had this to 500 gold, or 100 gold, you can see we only get 300 gold. See, so you only get 600. So it kind of doubles it for the amount that you put in. So for every 100, you get about 200 in return to 300. So the further you go away, the more chances you are from your, um, your ivory road over here, the more chances you have of getting uh, more money and better equipment. But for the first few turns, I prefer going closer. And the reason being is it will take me five turns to get 3,460 gold over here for investing 1,000 gold into it versus investing 1,000 gold in here getting 4,800 for 10 turns. So if you're looking at the amount of time traveled and the threats you may face, you're only getting about an extra 1,000 gold, but you're already putting 1,000 in. 
So you think about that in the long run, you're waiting five extra turns for only a thousand more gold versus you can get something quicker in less time for the amount of time money that you invested with a safer route. So I always like to, for the beginning of my Cathay campaigns, I like to always go with the shorter options at the start that gives you the best value bang for your buck and time traveled to then get your province started the fastest in the beginning stages of the game. So the reason why we also grab the Iron Hail Gunners is they are basically shotgun units that can mow down a lot of infantry. So now at this point we are going to be ending our turn and we should receive Harmony the next turn. As you can see, we have achieved harmony again, and we've completed our quest to get more money. And you can see when we achieve harmony, as you can see when we achieve harmony here, we get diplomacy plus 20, which is very important with Cathay. Cathay is very important with diplomacy and trade deals to boost their income and influence their neighbors. Construction costs minus 20% for all buildings is very important as well. So you can put less money into your economy to get more out, plus 40 growth. I cannot express enough how amazing this buff is, because growth is one of the most important resources in Total War. As you can see here, the growth data details here, this is how you upgrade your settlements. So as you can see, I need two population surplus. This one tells me that I'll get one population surplus in one turn, or two turns, and I need to get two for my next stage of my capital which are then, if you go to the building browser, will in turn allow me to recruit better units or affect my economy in a better way. So now, on this turn, what the game wants you to do is cleanse the mines. So they want you to go and attack the mines of Nan Yang. As you can see, there is another enemy sitting here. Hao Tao. I'm not sure if I said that right. But they're sitting right here ready to, if we don't attack this this turn, they're going to reinforce it and make it harder the next turn. And as you can see, the global recruitment units that we recruited last turn that took two turns now have one turn each. And after this one turn each, we're going to bring them over here and get ready to take over the snake gate. So we're going to take the storm dragon and we're going to attack the mines of Nang Yang. So it says close victory and we will lose our cavalry. I can show you how not to lose your cavalry on this battle and inflict heavy wounds onto their forces. So with Warhammer 3, they added new types of settlements, kind of like every other Total War game, where you actually have to take points on the map to hold to get more resources and basically break their defense. So we are actually going to play this battle in order to kind of show you how to get minimal casualties so you can have a stronger army to continue your campaign. So with that being said, let's jump into the battle. Or you can use Encircle and wait a few turns, but remember that that extra army is back here waiting to attack to bolster the forces here. So you're kind of in a sense of urgency where you need to attack the mines of Nang Yang immediately. As you can see, we are now on the battlefield of the minor settlement and you can see that there is red boxes around if we take these points we get to diminish their resources to um, basically bolster their forces and build barricades so that can be very beneficial to us so with that being said as we were taught before in the previous section of this video we're going to hit G to group up all our units that we'd like to stay together so for example, for siege battles, what we could do is we could group them up into their harmony to kind of do like a one for one, but we're not going to because that's not how I play. But you could do something like that if you wanted. I like to have it to where I can select all of them for their type of style that they are of a unit. As you can see, we still have our ancestral warriors, which would be very key in this battle to have us take less casualties as we continue. 
So as you can see, we're going to basically line up our forces again in a way to where we can lose less units for the assault. We're going to put our gunners to the side here because they're more like shotgun units, so we might have to use them to go forward and kind of shotgun upwards at other units. We're going to put... We're going to put all our archers in the middle here and put them back further since they can shoot over archers. at enemies that we don't like. The Celestial Faithful. I test begin. Warriors. Store and steal. Order and balance. Warriors. So I'm just trying to work out what kind of formation I would like to use so we can lose less units. In these settlement battles, the enemies can build barricades as well as towers to shoot our units. So that's where uh, Mao Yang, the Storm Dragon, is going to come in handy with her Earth Blood and the Harmony buffs that this gives us. So we want to put our balloon behind the archers so that we don't shoot our own balloon. So when the battle starts, we will most likely move forward. so that we can keep our buff. As you can see, I accidentally put these ones a little too close here, so we're gonna move them back. We're gonna move our units up. And we are going to siege the city. We're going to heal our units before we lose model count. As you can see, we are trying to use our balloon, our sky junk, to wipe out their forces. We're going to put our shotgunners up on the bridge here to do, to basically shotgun their units that go up on the bridge. We're going to use our archers to wipe out their archers. Move our balloon upwards. The problem with the balloon that I don't like is it's kind of the, like the way it attacks. As you can see, I made a mistake there myself. And now our shotgun units are taking arrows to the face, which is not good whatsoever. So we're going to draw them back and let the sky balloon take charge. We're going to summon our ancestral warriors to take out the rest of their units here. And they can't use them against us. We're going to bring our shotgun units back up after we heal them. We're trying to dwind dwindle down their forces so they can't do much to us. As you can see that this unit here has done major damage to them and it was a free cast unit. We're now going to take our cab and we're going to move them around to go take this point. We're going to bring our 
bring our units forward. And we're going to heal our units here again. So what I like to do is send my units in siege battles with the yin and yang mechanic. Oh, I didn't mean to press that. With the yin and yang mechanic behind each other to kind of give each other that buff. So you can press space bar, and now I can put the shotgun units either in front or the back. You can see these shotgun units are going to do a crap load of damage to their units. We have our balloon do some damage over there. As you can see, these shotgun units made quick work of those units there. We're gonna have our unit heal them here. Wind and fire. Cavalry, is so now our cavalry is charging their archers from behind to get that damage bonus increase. We're going to have the Iron Hail Gunners go right here to hold this line there. They should be close enough to get their Harmonial Bonus. We're going to have our Archers move back and have them move forward. We're going to give them a Defense Boost. And send them forward. go so now we will be able to wipe out the astromancer over here we're gonna send our balloon after the peasant long spearman to just dwindle them down So now we have claimed this point, so we're going to have these guys go claim this point here. We're going to have her heal the units in here. And then turn into a dragon. So now you can hot select one to have her go after the archers. We're going to bring these units here to go capture this point. I thought I told the horsemen to go the other way, and as you can see, they did not. We still have victory with very minimal casualties, so what we're gonna do is turn her back to a human. We're gonna wait a little bit, and we're gonna get a heal off to all the units. So all the damage units, we're going to send them here. We have all our damage units go here at the end of the battle. We're going to just going to speed up the battle. So we can get a heal off on them. Mm. 
Might as well bring our sky junk in. We're gonna try to bring everything in as close as possible to be able to be healed. Looks like they don't need to heal anyway. So now we're gonna use her heal ability and cast it on everyone here. As you can see, everyone's health is now going up and now we wait 30 seconds to cast another. And I think that is all the magic that we have to heal our units so we can hit end battle. As you can see, a decisive victory with very low casualties. We lost 73 units. And that was more so from me uh, making mistakes with forgetting about units. And as you can see, after the battle, we have, we lost 73, lost, remaining 640, we captured 156 enemies, we gained this much experience, and we gained a Scarecrow banner. And as you can see, when we hit the check mark, we can hit Occupy, always for your first province. You want to hit Occupy, so you don't get as much uh, conquest penalty of losing control. So now you can see, we got captured and occupied the following settlement, so we got extra money. We got the potion of foolhardiness, and now we have to main and control one province, either by direct ownership or through vassalization. So what that means is they want us, so if you click on the mines, you can see that Nang Ling is not in our grasp because we're at war. And we have to go take the settlement. So with that being said, they have one more turn. We can recruit two more units, which I like to do the Jade Warriors, since once we get uh, mines of Nang Yang, we get the training camp. We have an unassigned skill point. So what I like to do for my, every single lord that I have for me and for usually what I like to tell newer players is always go the bottom bar or the blue bar, um, which is red here. And I like to do route moucher because we're trying to get lightning strikes. So if you have extra uh, reinforcements in the battle, you can reduce the amount of time that they're going to show up into the battle if enemies have reinforcements or completely take it away. So I like to do reassuring presence with uh, Maui and the Storm Dragon only because uh, when you get into Nurgle's realm or anywhere there is uh, casualties from attrition, you get reduced 30%, which can keep your units alive longer. So you can see they are healing up and we have some Jade Guard coming into our army. And we're going to grab Harmonic Convergence to open up this tree. So it wants us to build this, but don't fall into the trap. We're trying to keep our harmony. So we don't forget to do Diplomacy. Do Quick Deal and check who would like to trade and become friends with you. Because that trade is going to help build your relations and make you friends. What I like to do during this turn, too, to is give the wait a turn or so and then give money to make him be friends with us so we can eventually confederate him. And end our turn. So as you can see, caravans have encounters, the toll... Up ahead, sewn across the road is a crude barrier, banned sent upon blockade and defiance. Demand a cargo from your caravan as a toll to continue refuse, and they will attack. So, if we refuse the ogres here, they will attack and take some of our cargo, which means we lose money. As you can see, they have lions, ogre bulls, they have a slaughter master beast, and three nobblers. Nobblers aren't very good units. The lions, or the saber chest pack, can be good units. The ogre bulls are a good unit, and so is the slaughter master. As you can see, though, we have a lot of anti-large, which can deal with the Ogre Bulls and the Slaughter Masterpiece, and we have a lot of archers. So we're going to draw our weapons, and it says Close Victory. Obviously, it wouldn't. this would go a lot better if I played it, but for the sake of time, we're going to hit Auto Resolve. Auto Resolve never favors the player, so I always, for my caravans, I always do 
venerate so that they can last longer on their journeys ahead. Snout wants us to capture and occupy the following settlement, the Snake Gate. And wants us to destroy that settlement over there. We're going to put her on the edge here. Mines of Nang Yang. We're going to upgrade the settlement. And we're going to have her go here and recruit two Jade Warriors. Actually, we're going to go and circle and siege the settlement. Why wouldn't it let me go ahead? Well, for some reason, it won't let me go ahead and attack. So we're just going to stand there, apparently. And we're going to recruit two Jade Warriors there. I'm going to grab Technician to make our unit stronger. Building upgrades, and we don't want to fall into the trap of no harmony. We're going to check our trade deals. As you can see, we're getting more and more money. And now they want to trade with us as well, and do a non-aggression. And now we're going to end our turn. Which sucks, though, because now they're going to get two more units for their army. Which is not what we were hoping for. Ready to defend. So it says Pyrrhic victory here that we would lose everything. And this is why I wanted to hit it last turn, but it wouldn't let me, unfortunately. So what we're going to do is just encircle it. So now here is the Wuzing Compass that we like that we were talking about earlier. Because we are playing as the Storm Dragon, we want to bolster the Great Bastion since we're going to be uh, taking over uh, the wall, the Snake Gate, this next turn. As you can see, you can also get growth, you can get control, or you can kind of push away magic. Now we're going to go take the Snake Gate. We're going to click Colonize. And there we go. We have now taken the Snake Gate. Don't forget to click on it and build it as well. And what we're going to do is recruit two Archers and a Jade Warrior on it. So then in two turns, we have more forces before they can bring their forces and attack the Snake Gate. As you can see here, they're going to take attrition every single turn, the longer we wait. Now we have a commandment, so what I like to do is for this first turn, because we just settled it, I like to grab the uh, casualty punishment plus 6%, so in case we get attacked, they can get 6 more percent next turn to replenish. We're going to check our diplomacy again. Always at the end of, ter end of turn of Cathay, check Diplomacy. And we're going to grab the Defensive Alliance with Imperial Wardens. Which now we can create outposts. But I would not recommend creating outposts on factions that you have the same units. So you can get more unique, uh, more unique units from different factions. So as you can see, we settled Snake Gate, so next turn it should restore to its former glory and become the strong Snake Gate. We're going to take more cargo. So now we have too much Yang. So we need more Yin. So next turn, after this one's done, we're going to create a Yin building. As you can see in the snake gate, now we have them fully replenishing. So we can grab the, I always like to go with the um, Bastion Lumber Pile immediately so that in case we get attacked. And then the next time around, we will go for the other building that we'll show you in a little bit here.
As you can see, we can do a Pyrrhic victory now without losing anything. End our turn. Occupy. Or you can play the battle as well if you would like. Now we have our first province. But our units will heal up pretty nicely. And we can recruit more Jade Warriors. We're going to go to Nain Lee and we're going to upgrade it. And now, as you can see, because we took that, we now have perfect balance and harmony. Skill point, we're going to go for two of these. So we take less attrition. Our Astromancer, we're going to go for Rolling Sky, so anything within our hex area has minus speed and minus defense. Our commandment for our main area, I always like to go with the campaign movement range for enemy armies, minus 20%, so in case they breach the Bastion. And now we need to check for Diplomacy. And that is you taking your first province in five turns and taking the Snake Gate in five turns as well. Honestly, you can focus on these guys down here if you want. What I usually do is recruit after I get this unit, I bring them up there next turn. Recruit a new lord here, and then recruit a lord here to balance out the harmony, and so on and so forth. But let us continue by hitting end turn. As you can see, our caravan has now been completed, so now look how much money we have from bringing that over. And we got a frost wearer and skull. Frostworm Skull, and our Harmony is now balanced again, and we control the province. We're going to take the Storm Dragon and bring her to the Mines of Nang Yang, and recruit two more Jade Warriors. We're also going to upgrade this to the um, second part to get better barracks. as well as we are going to build walls here to make the settlement stronger from attack. We're also going to go to our snake gate and recruit a peasant long spearman and a peasant archer just to hold the gate from the forces of chaos. Caravan Master, we're going to go Inspired. Actually, we had, yeah, Inspired Marksmanship since we had more archers. We're going to skip the outpost, and we're going to look for more diplomacy. So I am not going to make a defensive alliance with Celestial Loyus, just because um, I know that later on in the game that they're going to make me go to war with some orcs over here and some Skaven, and I would rather not when I'm trying to figure out my first provinces to defend my Great Bastion. Turn. I'm going to say no because that's going to drive us to go to war with a lot of factions that we don't want to go to war with yet. Now we're going to put, as you can see, it didn't matter that we auto resolve that because we had nothing that's going to attack us anytime soon. And we are going to put them on the edge of the map here. And we're going to recruit. We're actually going to hold off for one more turn until we get the Jade Warriors. So we're just going to go into Ambush Stance just in case they leave. So now the one thing you have to do, keep in mind here is watch out for this down here by creating this to have walls next turn and recruiting a Lord. And end turn. As you can see, they did exactly what we wanted them to, and they force marched all the way over here with their armies, which our army can easily take out this army. Also, they force march, which force march, as you can see, makes them very tired. So basically, their units are very weak compared to fully replenished heroes 
So now what we can do is wipe out their army and they can't run away because they were in March stance. And we can just auto resolve this and venerate. And then what we can do is go back into the settlement and recruit Jade Warrior Crosswomen, which will now replace the Peasant Archers. I'm also going to get rid of... I think I recruited too many Jade Warriors. Actually, we'll get rid of the Peasant. And we'll get rid of this one for the next turn to recruit more of the Crosswomen. We're actually, yeah, we, we should probably get rid of those, but we're going to hold off so we can go hit Foretold with those and then fix our army. We're going to recruit two more of these. And you have to keep in mind the Great Bastion Threat Meter up here is when the next uh, Horde will attack the gate. We're basically preparing ourselves for that every turn, so three more turns. Here, we're going to put a wall. Now what we can do is upgrade our income buildings, because they'll upgrade at the same time, to have yin and yang. So now we're going to grab the corruption and ir response, so that we have cash replenishment rate. I was born to wield. Give the astromancer, we're going to give them the thunderbolt and the wind blast. We're going to check our diplomacy. Celestial and we don't want to make a defensive alliance with Celestial Loyus. Because it will screw you over later. And we're going to look at our last settlement here. Make sure nothing's around. And end our turn. So now we do not have balance anymore. So actually what we're going to do... Just cancel this one out, so the next turn we have balance. We're going to research our new technology by going dragon scales to get better for jade armor, for jade warriors crossmen, and jade crossmen shields, which are the better units of our armor army for a while. We are now going to go attack their city over here with the units that we have. It says close victory. We can auto resolve or you can play it. Occupy. And now you have got rid of the Zinch threat in your area. You get 3,000 gold. Destroy the faction and you get some tools along the way. And the Terracotta Graveyard. We're going to delete the Cav building since it makes no sense because you can't get to the max Cav building. And now we're going to have the Storm Dragon come down south. To the shrine of the alchemist and go get rid of the threats down south for us when asks, so we're going to stay when into the terror crater graveyard and basically we're going to combine these units to, to heal faster get rid of that unit and we should be able to get the crosswind once we go across the wall assign some skill points here so we're going to get the curse of midnight and now we can get Lightning Strike. Which Lightning Strike, I cannot stress enough, is one of the most important abilities in the Warhammer genre games. So how many turns would it take to upgrade this? Now you gotta think how many turns would it take to upgrade this? Because it's going to take four turns to get that. So that's going to take two turns. So when this gets to two, we want to build that building to keep our harmony. Ready to defend. Let's check our quests. So we need to recruit new units and gain another province. So that's what we're going to be doing is gaining another province by going south and taking out these buildings. Or we can do it by vassalization. Terracotta Graveyard, we will build the wall next time we can get more growth here. So in five turns, we can build the wall. 
Or we could ruin our balance. Did that not fix our balance? Nope. Okay. So we need actually to get this building here to fill out our balance. We're going to bring her to the mines of Nanyang and recruit two more J crossbowmen. We're also going to recruit two more peasant units. Going to get Fire Dragon Breath so that she has a good attack. And we're going to check our diplomacy. We can trade with some dwarves. We can almost confederate them. We could pay them and confederate them, but we're going to wait. So the nice thing is, is now you have secured your home province from all threats inside besides south, and you're just going to send Mao Ying down and go finish this off, and you're set on your Cathay campaign. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope this helps you guys with your campaigns in the future. Peace out, and I love you all.